Do you want to know the secret to effective time blocking and be insanely productive? Notion can be your best friend here. Time blocking allows you to effectively manage all things that you have to do in a given week. Effectively manage means three things. Step one, allot time blocks to the tasks that matter most. Step two, follow through on your commitment and step three, review your day and week to provide the necessary course correction. My goal in creating this was that after the setup process, the day-to-day -day process should be as simple as possible. Think of your time as a jar. When you fill the jar with big rocks, they represent the most essential stuff in life. Completing these helps you feel fulfilled. But then again, the fun in life comes from pebbles to give you that feeling of satisfaction. And yet again, you also want to enjoy life. That helps you experience pure joy. To represent each one of these facets of life, you need different calendars to be used with time blocking. In order to reflect different facets of my life, I set up eight calendars. Now we will fill up the 168 hours of the week with the most relevant tasks. In order to do this, we select the intended activity and the appointment time from the activities table. Given that this is a date feature, you can set up a reminder for the appointment time. All of this can be done within the date field like this. This is what most people refer to as time blocking, but it merely represents step one of the process. In step two, you select the task type. The reason for this is that you may intend to do something but end up doing something completely different. You may have been called for a meeting but the meeting may have got cancelled. You have many options on how to utilize the time wisely and you could just have some fun by killing time browsing social media. In which case the time really becomes unproductive. So this marker is there to make sure you clock what you're actually doing. Now you name the activity that you're actually carrying out. Now click the start timer and give it a number so that later on you have some form of traceability. Let's say you call it DDMM followed by a serial number. DDMM refers to the day and the month. You will notice that as soon as you select this, the start time is automatically punched in, taking the time from your laptop. You will provide a similar end time by clicking on the end timer when you finish the task. Sometimes you may end up forgetting to close the time. In order to remember, you can set up a manual reminder at the end of the table with at the rate remind command. With this, you have all the data to know what you intended to do and what you actually did. On a daily, weekly or monthly basis, you would want to know how you've actually spent your time and what can you do to improve it. That information is provided under views. In the month view, you can see how you've utilized your time for that month. This is a table view. You can see the time band you had blocked. It tells you how many minutes you have utilized towards each one of the activities and how much in total. If you see that you are spending far too much time on making Zoom calls to friends, you need to find a way to pull back and see what's happening. If you look at this filter, it's been set to July 2020. You can set this filter say to week, to month or even year. If you look at the activity type, you're trying to zoom in into different task types. You will be trying to see whether you've been spending too much time or too less time in that area. The filter here has been set to task type and the month has been set to July 2020. Under unproductive time, you can actually see all the task types that you've flagged off as unproductive time. This is the real time that you could have saved had you not wasted it. I have summed up the unproductive minutes using the calculate field at the bottom of the column. Under the calendar type view, you can see each of your calendars and how you've spent the time. So your appointments show up and it tells you the time band it relates to, how much time you actually spent against that appointment. 
and the time band against which you spent that time. So if you scheduled a task for an hour but worked on it for only 30 minutes, you actually wasted time. If you notice there's a tick or a cross at the end of the time spent to indicate whether you spend time on scheduled items or not. The intended activity is also highlighted below. In the time of the day view, you can actually see what part of the day is productive and what part of the day is unproductive so that you can fix your effectiveness during those time blocks. Again, you can filter this to a specific day to zoom in. In the week view, you can see the same time of the day view for the entire week. You can change this for the month as well, if you so desire. Now that you have a sense of the day-to-day -day view, let's look at some of the settings that will allow you to do the magic. The whole construct is made possible with three databases. Two of these database tables are hidden and that creates the magic. These two databases have relations with the activities database. I call these two databases the start timer and the end timer. It has four columns. One is the name that was populated automatically from the activities table. The start time is not a date column, but a property called created time under advanced. This allows you to add a date and a time automatically as soon as you add a new record. You can't add two different strings for each of the columns and that's why you have two separate databases. The third column is a relation property which links back to the specific activity row. The last column is a formula called two number start time which extracts the start time as a number so that we can do some math for the elapsed time later. In order to make sure that all of this is populated automatically, when you just click and provide a number into the activities database, the following additional things are needed. We are going to use a new self-referencing template filters feature that Notion provided earlier this year. Now we set up a new template in the start timer database. Let's label the new template as new start time. Now within the new start time template, we need to create a linked database which links back to the activities database. Now for the magic. For the self-referencing templates filter, we filter the linked activities database with the condition where and select the property as the relation property, start timer. We keep contains and add the element that we just created, which is the new start time. What this means is that whenever we add a new start time, it's going to bring up the template, which we can name as we would like to tag it with. So now that we've done with the template, we just hit back and that's it. You really don't have to see this database until and unless you're troubleshooting for something. Again, you do the same thing for the end timer. If you spend time, the elapsed time will show you a higher number. You will notice that the start time and the end time are roll up properties. Let's have a look at these individually. Now let's look at the other columns we didn't go through during the demo. You will notice that the column intended question mark shows the tick if both type and intended activity matches. This is a formula property. In the timestamp formula column, we calculated the timestamp from the estimated time column called two number ET. ET stands for end time. And we have a similar one for ST, which is for start time. Now these numbers are coming in from the start timer and the end timer tables. The time band is probably the simplest looking of them all. But let's look at the formula, which really looks monstrous. The logic of the formula is to extract the end time of the function and plug it in against the appropriate time band. Now there are a few challenges here. The two number ET once rolled down ceases to be a number. So using the two number formula, we convert that back into a number. Then using the from timestamp formula, we converted that back into a date. The elapsed time is the calculation of minutes. Notice here that the numbers arrived at based on the timestamp are unix milliseconds. And hence you need to divide this by 60,000 to arrive at the correct value in minutes. The ET formula is actually a simple string concat for time band. The words time spent, a gap, the time spent which we arrived at as a formula. 
and the intended tick box color to provide all the details in one string. The week number is extracted from the two number ET column with the format date formula with a W to indicate weeks. The year is similarly extracted with the YYYY option for format date. Before you go, I have just one more thing. I want to introduce you to Jarvis. Hi guys, I'm Jarvis. Jarvis, do you want to say something to the viewers? Sure. Why did the llama cross the road? Jarvis! Sorry about that. Can you guys subscribe if you haven't already? And get notified of new videos by hitting the bell icon. I would love to meet you guys again in the next video.